If you look at Ethiopian history, so-called Ethiopian history, uh, Ethiopia was only the Tigray Amhara region in the north all the way up to around 1898-99. And uh, under Menelik, uh, even by Ethiopians' own admission, whom they regard as the founder of the nation, he competed with European colonization, communicated and negotiated in expanding his empire that now includes the Oromos and other nationalities in the southern part of the so-called present-day Ethiopia. And this, this through constant struggle between the Amharas and the Tigris that the Ethiopian history is dominated to control power. And since the fall of the military regime, the Tigray uh, Liberation Front led uh, the guerrilla war. Uh, after the defeat, they took over power uh, under the brand name of EPRVF. Uh, even though today, all publication, as all publications suggest, it is entirely the entire military, political, defense system is controlled by the uh, Tigray, Tigrayans from the northern part, who constitute only six percent of the country. So, within the large scheme of this issue of land sale and its implication, these are group of uh, 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 people who sees the land that they are selling as somebody else's land, which is exactly what is taking place. They are selling the Oromo land and then use the revenue that they are generating to develop their country, the real Ethiopia, which is the Tigray part of uh, what you and the international community consider as Ethiopia. So there are double injustice there. One, the way the land is put to use under the current massive acquisition and the mechanized farming that has environmental impact, but has very devastating impact on the population. Second, that population, the revenue that is generated is not even reinvented in these people, but instead taken and reinvented in the original Ethiopia, the homeland of the ruling class.